Welcome back to Switched to Linux. It is Monday and it is time for another Linux Top 5. And today we're going to be talking about five tips to pick your Ubuntu. So all of the Ubuntu flavors for 1904 are now released. And so what we're going to do is just kind of talk about if, if you're new to Linux and you're looking at an Ubuntu build, what Ubuntu should you try? And so there are a number of different system specs to look at, but what are the various forms of Ubuntu? Well, of course, we have the basic regular run-of-the-mill Ubuntu based on GNOME. We also have Kylin, which is specifically for Chinese users, although can be used worldwide. We have Zubuntu, which is based on XFCE. By the way, the difference between most of these just different, um, is just different uh, desktop environments. Uh, but we have XFCE is a uh, super lightweight and fast Linux distribution. Uh, Lubuntu is another super fast one. This is based on LXQT, uh, which is actually a newer one. Lubuntu used to be LXDE, now it's LXQT. And then we have Kubuntu based on KDE. We have Ubuntu Budgie, of course, with the Budgie desktop from the Solus team. We have Ubuntu Studio, which is a special one, which is also based on XFCE, but focuses on media production. More on that later. And we have Mate, which is probably the most popular Ubuntu uh, outside of the regular one. So with that, let's go ahead and look at five questions to ask yourself. Number one, what are your machine specs? Now, the older, 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 older machines are now out. There are no more 32-bit versions for any of these, at least not officially. And so if you are looking at a 32-bit processor, you're going to have to go over to Linux Mint or Peppermint or one of the other uh, systems that, you, that still has 32-bit systems. Ubuntu uh, does not, and the flavors do not anymore either at least as of looking for any of them on this system. So it kind of boils down to your RAM. If you have just one or two gigs of RAM in your system, and uh, I have computers like this, there are some distros that are going to work a lot better for you. Zubuntu and Lubuntu being the number one. Those are the lightest system resource systems. Now, many people will also say Mate also would, would help in that situation. I think it probably would as well. But definitely, if you have lower system specs, then go with Zubuntu or Lubuntu first. Those should be your first places to go because they do not use a lot of system resources, allowing more resources for the work that you're doing. If you have, of course, four gigs or more, you'll be perfectly fine on any of the Ubuntu distributions. Number two, if you have a need to interface with modern cloud systems, maybe you're interfacing with documents or contacts or calendars, any of those types of things, and you would like the best full round integration, there are two flavors of Ubuntu that you want to be looking at. One of those is going to be your good old run-of-the-mill standard Ubuntu. Based on GNOME 3.32, running very snappy, it also has online accounts integrated, so you can attach your Nextcloud accounts or your Google accounts or your Microsoft accounts or Facebook accounts. I'm not sure what that does, um, but it's definitely something you can do if that's something you want to do. The other option, of course, is Ubuntu Budgie. Ubuntu Budgie is definitely a great version of Ubuntu, and it also supports all of your online cloud interfacing. Now, the other one which can do this is Kubuntu. I do not believe that all of the packages to do that are pre-installed. So KDE does have the ability to do your online account interfacing with the system as well, but all of the times that I've worked with that, I've actually had to install everything. But those are your options, your regular Ubuntu, or Ubuntu Budgie, and also Kubuntu if you want to add some packages. Number three, do you have a desire to customize your desktop? Some people absolutely love customizing their systems. Some people do not care in the slightest. 
If you are on the spectrum that you don't care in the slightest, just go ahead and use the Griddle regular standard Ubuntu. Based on GNOME, the least customizable desktop, and I know there's extensions to it install, but the point is, is they're not created by the developers. Okay, you can do some things with it, but it's not as customizable out of the box as other distributions. If you are on the opposite end of that spectrum and you absolutely want to customize everything, you want a full-blown, full-fledged, your own system, you want to run with Kubuntu based on KDE, the most customizable desktop. Now, the thing is, is that it can get confusing digging through your settings, but nevertheless, if you are in that spectrum and you want a lot of that customizability, then definitely go with Kubuntu. Now, other systems that will also allow you to make a lot of these changes are Mate also has a lot of customization and Zubuntu also has a lot of customization based on Mate and, and XFCE. They, neither of those though has quite the level of customization that Plasma has. And then of course, as we said, the other end of the spectrum, Ubuntu, yeah, you're not really gonna be customizing that one much at all. Number four, are you sick of the regular run-of-the-mill old systems that have been set up for the last 35 years and you've got a little thing in your bottom corner and you pull up a menu and all this kind of stuff, you want something completely different? Well, the best ones, if you want something completely different, are the regular Ubuntu based on the GNOME desktop and having its own customized uh, layout is a little bit different. Ubuntu, one of the things about it, and this kind of came in the Unity days of Ubuntu, is is very easy to recognize and identify. You, you see a, a picture of a computer screen, you always look for that sidebar, you can tell it's Ubuntu right out of the gate. It has a different type of interface. It doesn't interface quite the same way as a standard run-of-the-mill Windows machine has interfaced over the years. Now, of course, another one which is a close runner is Budgie. Budgie kind of has this, this interface that I describe as a combination of a Windows and a Mac type interface. We have a Raven menu that slides in from the right. It gives you your notifications. It gives you your calendars and some quick settings. But we also still have a menu that we can get to and find applications in a list format uh, very well. Uh, at the same time. And so your two basic ones, your regular Ubuntu and your Ubuntu Budgie, if you just want a different UI, you want a completely different interface, you just want to make your computer look different, those are some good tips for you. Number five, special needs. If you have some special needs, then uh, there are a, actually a few Ubuntu flavors for you. One of these, as we'd mentioned earlier, is Kylin. Ubuntu Kylin is developed uh, by some Chinese users, and it's developed, they say it's a worldwide Linux uh, distro, but it does have a lot of systems which make the Chinese language packs work a lot better. So if you are needing something uh, that has uh, the ability to work within the Chinese language setup, then um, Kylin is definitely for you. I don't know much more about Kylin other than that. Now the next one we want to look at is Ubuntu Studio. Ubuntu Studio is a great flavor for a variety of different types of um, AV or desktop publishing, just the, the different types of serious utilitarian type advanced type uh, tools. So they have different packages. Your audio packages will contain a lot of different applications for music production. We have Jack, we have Ordor, uh, different sequencers, synthesizers, amplifiers, just so many different things in here that are uh, just some more advanced packages specifically geared towards audio production. We have the same with graphics, Inkscape, Blend. Now, yeah, a lot of these applications you can actually go ahead and install yourself on any system. This just makes it easy to set it up and install it in a nice, easy to use format right out of the box. So um, there's your um, video, here's your photography, dark tail, uh, dark table. Wow, dark tail? Sounds like a bad uh, TV series or something. Uh, there's Shotwell for uh, doing some photography. And then for publishing, we have Calibri, Scribus, LibreOffice. 
just a series of different packages. The other one that could be special needs is uh, Ubuntu Mate because it actually has some uh, Raspberry Pi builds in here as well. So you want to look at your various uh, various different things. So there is a experimental for model B3 and B3 plus, and there's actually a base ARMv7 for two, three, and three plus for Raspberry Pis. So if you are needing something based on this, now another fun thing I want to experiment with a little bit is now with Ubuntu 19.04, they're saying that they have a lot more touchscreen support built out of the box. And I have a touchscreen on my, uh, for my Raspberry Pi, so I'm kind of itching to give this a try, see if it works. So these are my tips for picking which Ubuntu flavor is best for you. Let us know what your tips are in the comments down below. You can help support the channel by looking at the links up above me or in the description down below and follow along on the social media platform if you want uh, to get some updates as to what we're doing.